Hey there, I'm Timothy Blumberg. I'm a senior at Duke and I want to explain how compilers work. So I'm taking a great course on compilers this semester and I've been so incredibly blown away by how fascinating these, these, these programs are. Uh, they're incredibly intricate and they contain a lot of really smart tricks that uh, I just find super intellectually stimulating. So I want to talk about them today and hopefully I can make it not boring. So what is a compiler? A compiler is a program that takes programs written in a high-level language and transforms them into programs that a computer can understand and compute directly. Uh, so here's a high-level representation of how compilers really work. Uh, so the stages on the left-hand side are dependent on the language that you're compiling into. So syntax rules and things like that uh, are determined over here. Uh, Machine-dependent stages are over on the right-hand side. So this deals with things like uh, register allocation, you know, how many registers a machine actually has, uh, how memory is laid out, all of those problems. So the first stage in compiling is uh, taking the program, which is really just a list of characters, and it chops it into tokens. And so these tokens could be reasoned about a lot more directly. Instead of uh, just this list of, of ASCII characters, we can really have an integer representation of two. So in the next gauge, parsing, we take that list of tokens, uh, and we try to create a syntactic representation of what is being represented by the program. So here we're taking 2 plus 2, and we're assigning it to a variable var name. So we take these tokens, and we can create this abstract syntax tree here. The next stage is called semantic analysis. So semantic analysis, we want to check our abstract syntax tree to make sure uh, and figure out what types our various uh, variables have, and every time that they're used, if their types are consistent. So here, because 2 is an integer, and 2 is an integer, adding them together, that must create an integer. And because we're assigning that value to var name, we can conclude that var name is of type integer. So therefore, later on in the program, we cannot add it to a string. The next stage is called instruction selection. So we take our abstract syntax tree, and we transform it into another representation that's almost assembly, called internal representation. Internal representation, uh, we pretend that our machine has infinitely many registers, which is not true, but it makes things easier during this stage. So this temporary value is a value that needs to live in a register at some point in time, uh, but we just don't know which register specifically. So during register allocation, we take those temporary values and we assign them, we schedule them uh, with real registers. So we only have a finite set of registers, uh, and these values need to live in memory at, at given numbers of times. So one register will be used many thousands of times during a program uh, and assign many different values. So we need to make sure that the right values are never overwritten and are always available at the right times. Uh, then we generate our real assembly, and we pass that assembly into our assembler. So an assembler takes in a line of assembly code and just transforms it into the ones and zeros that the machine is expecting uh, it can use to do computation. Then we link it, uh, and we create machine code that can actually be run and do computation. Uh, and so it's a crazy long road to go from that high level uh, code, like Python or Java or C++, but we finally get machine code at the end of the day, uh, and it runs on your computer. And how complicated this process is, and yet how flawlessly it always works, I'm just blown away every time it goes well. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that.